Well that turned out pretty ordinary. Took four runners for a place, which um, can pay off on big races like this where there's a large field and huge number of once a year punters like me. But uh, only number seven came in. Paid $4.20, so for my $20 investment, I got a return of $21. Net profit, one dollar. Yep, it's a mugs game. Now we had that crazy behaviour where even with no load, this ferro resonant transformer was drawing significant currents and, and it varied depending on the incoming voltage. So just as a sanity check, I'm going to do a similar thing with an ordinary transformer like this beast, which is similar output voltage, 10 volts and reasonably high current 12 amps uh, and see if this is completely not like that in other words no current at any voltage or very very low current at any voltage so now I've got this transformer connected just very roughly they do make connection those pins I'm only doing this for a minute so dangerous as that is it's only going to be there for a short while and it's quite controlled at least that's held down by an earth's terminal uh, and we can we'll be able to see voltage on the secondary so we know that that's making contact right apply power I've also just noticed that my leads burnt out so or the circuit controlling it but I suspect the lead I think maybe it's seeing much more voltage than it can handle and I have to do something about that circuit so output power you can see we're getting some output voltage over there so this is connecting and it's 0.01 amp at virtually or slightly increasing to 0.02 now 0.03 0.04 but there aren't these peaks and troughs in the current as the voltage goes up so 240 volts we got we're drawing 120 milliamps nothing like the several amps that that ferro resin transformer was, was drawing so that is a, pe a peculiarity of ferro resonant transformers it's not a normal behavior so we'll go back to the ferro resonant and uh, look at some waveforms on the oscilloscope as we do that Test out the wiring on this ferro resonant transformer and measured a few voltages and we get this uh, there's two center tap secondaries of slightly different voltages there's the ferro resonant bit of the winding and the uh, capacitor. The active, as you'd expect, goes through the fuse. But what I find a bit curious is that instead of going to the voltage tappings, the neutral goes there and the, the active goes to the common side of the transformer. I guess it doesn't matter much, but I think it's a bit strange. Now, to measure voltages and currents, I've built up this little circuit here. which consists of a bunch of resistors totaling 270k with the last one being 27k so the voltage there is one tenth of what goes in there which is connected to the active and goes to the transformer the neutral also goes to the transformer but via a 0.1 ohm 5 watt resistor so we can measure the current across that so this the voltage on this will be bouncing up and down by whatever the voltage drop is across that relative to neutral but that's okay now i'm going to measure the voltage there and the current drop and the current sense voltage there with the oscilloscope no earth leads because the neutral is essentially at earth we'll just check the voltage on that to make sure that it's very close to earth uh, but if, if I did connect the earth leads to that, then that's naughty because with this place it wouldn't really matter. But if we had a, a, a safety switch on the main panel, um, that would trip by connecting anything, connecting earth to neutral. Uh, so I shouldn't need to do it. I should be able to see well enough what's going on just by looking at them relative to earth, which is virtually the same as neutral. So as a safety slash sanity check, 
We'll put some volts into here, check that the active is volts above earth and that neutral is very close to it. Yeah, there's voltage there from active to neutral and from active to ground. Yeah, same voltage to ground. Between ground and neutral coming in. That doesn't that doesn't seem right. Slightly less on the other side of the resistor. What's going on here? So from earth to neutral we're getting hundred volts AC. That would tell me that the circuit from neutral back to this is open circuit. Why is that? Okay, something's screwy going on here. I'll have to investigate. Now it seems the problem was caused by some idiot hadn't soldered this resistor on properly. But it's a reminder of how dangerous this stuff can be. This resistor wasn't soldered on that side there, so all this here, which you'd think is neutral and relatively safe, was actually pulled up by the transformer primary to full mains voltage, active. So this current sense wire here, which should only be a few volts above earth and neutral, is suddenly 240 volts. Um, so, <laughs> bloody dangerous. I mean, so, don't rely on a, on a resistor, especially these things, because they burn out fairly easily. Uh, don't rely on that to uh, protect what's coming, what's, what's connected on the other side of it. Although that's what I'm about to do. Power on. We're sticking 110 odd volts into there. Let's wind that up to a lower current, to one of those points where it draws a lower current. Uh, check some voltages from earth to active. Come on, 160 odd volts, just like it says, to neutral, 0.2 of a volt as it should be, both sides of that resistor now are very close to neutral, so about 0.2 of a volt or something. So we can, uh, and also if we look at across the voltage divider, we'll set that at 100 Let's make 175. 175 volts coming in across the voltage divider. 17.1. Not quite divide by 10, but fairly close. Surprised that I would have thought it would be better. It should have been 17.5 at 17.2. Alright, now let's uh, look at it on the oscilloscope. So we're looking at the voltage at the output of that divider there, so on channel 1, and channel 2 is looking at the voltage across that resistor, the, the current. So this is channel 1 locked to the trigger on the line frequency, so of course it's nicely locked. I'm using the digital oscilloscope because with the analog one it's strobed with the camera and made it very hard to see anything. So there's our incoming volts. It's only 37, so I better turn this down because we're going to go up, aren't we? Turn down some more. Okay, got things making a bit more sense now. The crow wouldn't let me put in more than about um, 20 or 30 volts. Uh, so I have to switch to times 10 on that probe. So now. 10 volts per division there. RMS 15.4 volts, which is one tenth of the 150 we're putting in. So now turning on channel 2 to look at the current. So there's the current and out of phase with the voltage as you'd expect in an inductive circuit. Not very clean though, is it? Uh, and let's look at it. Let's look at it varying voltage. Turning the voltage down, but the current goes up. Wanting the voltage up, current increases. To a peak of about 2.3 amps, 100 odd volts. Keep increasing the voltage. 
the current goes down now and reaches a minimum at around about 200 volts and then if we keep going up the current increases again 250 volts drawing 2 amps and not triggering very well so it's very noisy and you didn't see crap on there which I presume is some interaction with the resonant tank circuit and so is all this nonsense at the high voltages not sure what to make of this um, let's ignore the current for a moment and look at the output voltage because I expect to see some clipping because the whole idea of resonant transformers is that they saturate the at least the secondary side I believe so that it, at a certain point the secondary voltage is not going to change because its winding is or the core that it's wound on is its magnetic flux is completely saturating the core and increasing the primary voltage won't increase the flux density any further so the voltage remains the same likewise given that normal operation puts it somewhere inside that saturated region not only does increasing the voltage not increase the output voltage but decreasing it keeps as long as it stays within that saturated zone decreasing the input voltage won't have an effect on the output either I believe it works about for about you know, 10 or 20 percent uh, either side of uh, the nominal mains voltage but that other thing that uh, lion tamer as I read somewhere will work down 120 volts so yeah I'm curious to see what's going on there but let's have a look at the output current with some sort of a load. So luckily I kept some of the wiring that used to go into these things including the connectors that go there. So we can do some experiments on the secondary side and there's current there. Plenty of it. Just take it across this carbon rod see what happens. Watch the current on the... So we're drawing 4 amps on the primary. See the waveform on the oscilloscope. But it went very quiet with all that current. Maybe it likes it. The output current, sorry, the primary current on the white trace on the oscilloscope is now quite nice. Nicely out of, perfectly out of phase with the voltage. And that resistor and this wire, the wires I'm holding are getting hot. I hope it's not the wires that are hot but rather just because they're connected to that resistor, that carbon rod. Not sure how many amps we've got running there on the secondary side but quite a few because these wires are getting quite hot. So that uh, carbon rod as a dummy load, well it drew a lot of current didn't it? And too much and also it wasn't very stable <clears throat> so I've connected up six 35 watt 12 volt halogen bulbs which I actually bortated for this purpose to be a, a, a dummy load for testing power supplies didn't think it would be this thing but anyway uh, so let's stick some volts into that this is measuring the voltage across the bulbs six take it up to it's their nominal 12 volt rating. They're pretty bright and uh, the cheap ass clamp meters say 19.3 on that one 18.8 on that let's call it uh, let's call it 19 19 times 12.3 234 watts, which divided by 6, 39 watts, so yeah, 39 watts in each because we're running a bit higher than 12.4 volts. <coughs> so, now let's, let's have a look at the, we can see nice waveforms on the primary, the voltage is the yellow or green or whatever the bloody hell that is, I don't know, I'm colorblind, and the white, blue, whatever that is, is um, the current in the primary. And it's 
nice he behaved with a load on it, without the load it's all over the show. And, and the transformer's quiet. When it's got no load it makes a lot of racket. Now I'm going to take the channel 1, the voltage, and connect it across there so we can look at the secondary voltage. I've got the channel 1 sitting on across the uh, secondary, across the bulbs. The I can do that connecting the ground wire of the oscilloscope which is earthed to one side of the transformer secondary because the secondary is completely isolated from earth and everything everything else so of course I checked that first and uh, yes it can be done now we're not so we're looking on the, that uh, green yellow whatever it is trace is the is this voltage here and it's still nice and sine wavy but that's because we're across the outputs of, of this sec of this uh, this secondary to get it into the range where that thing's at its normal voltage of 20 volts that would uh, probably burn out the bulb so I'm going to disconnect it from there and connect it just across there so we only have 10.8 volts and then we can get it turn the voltage up from the very out to the point where we're getting the transformer into its saturated core area presumably let's see it's now just sitting across one of these tappings, 10.8 volts nominal, so wind it up.